Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Ladies Wednesday Wisdom Webinar. I'm Maggie Montemuro, and I'm the Marketing Manager at Savvy Ladies. I would like to remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into the chat box. If you're joining us by phone, email your question to info at SavvyLadies.org. Today's presenter is Diane Pollock, founder of Style & Power, a wardrobe consulting and personal shopping service for women in New York City. Diane has over 20 years of experience as a clothing designer. Diane is focused on helping busy women achieve an organized closet and empowered wardrobe. She believes that feeling confident in your clothing is empowering internally and radiates outward. Thanks for joining us today, Diane, and I'll hand it over to you. Great, hello. Okay, so how many of you open your closet and actually have something to wear? So I know I can't see a show of hands, but I know that it's a common problem. Even if we have a wardrobe full of clothing, some days you just can't figure it out. Maybe your closet is jumbled full of items. And then to complicate things more, it depends on your mood, the weather, and what you're doing that day. So if you're overwhelmed in your closet, not sure what is appropriate for various occasions, need help accessorizing and styling outfits, or need some tools and tips to help feel in your, empowered in your wardrobe, then this lecture is for you. Take a minute and remember a time when you felt absolutely great in your outfit, in your look, what you were wearing. Perhaps it was a wedding, a special occasion. Perhaps you chose this special dress and bought the exact matching shoes, chose the right accessories, took extra time with your makeup and your hair, or perhaps you even went out to a hair salon and had it done. Even the concept of walking out of a hair salon and knowing that your hair looks so fabulous, unfortunately, maybe you can't replicate it yourself, but you know, what is that feeling that you felt on that special occasion or when you walked out of the hair salon? Empowered, confident, sexy, maybe all of the above. Maybe you have your own word, but whatever it is, it's this positive, inspirational feeling. And really, you don't want to just feel that way on a special occasion. Uh, you want to feel that way on a regular basis. So let me tell you about the first time that I felt that way. I was about 12 years old, and I got my first pair of designer jeans, which were really hot then. And I put on my jeans, and I chose the perfect top to wear, and I went to this sculpture garden with my family. And I was posing like a model. And I felt so cool and so whatever positive word that your 12-year-old self wants to feel. I felt that way that day. And I made a promise to myself. I said, you know what? I love the way this makes me feel. I am really going to take special care in thinking about what I wear every day so that I can feel this way. And so I, I've actually kept that promise to myself. Now, fast forward, I'm in a client's closet and she takes out this leopard raincoat and she says to me, this raincoat makes me feel like a million bucks. And I said to her, well, how often do you wear it? And she said, not very often. And I said, well, don't you want to feel like a million bucks all the time or at least on a regular basis? So you want to create a wardrobe full of clothing that makes you feel that way. Now, I know fashion can be perceived as superficial, but it can also be really empowering. It can make you feel confident. You can carry yourself in a certain way. You probably hold your shoulders back with your chest out, and you sort of radiate this confidence out. And other people are going to catch on to your vibe and your energy, and they're going to perceive you that way. And the good news is you get to choose how you want to present yourself how you want to show up. So this is really key to being successful. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I help women feel confident and empowered in their dress. You can walk into a room and feel confident and everyone in the room is going to feel that way. 
So a little bit about my background. I had a past career as a clothing designer, but actually, wait, let me, let me backtrack a little bit, actually. We talked about how my 12-year-old self um, felt empowered, and actually growing up, all through growing up, I was uh, very fortunate to be creative. I'm still creative, and I still do this stuff, but I always made my own uh, clothing and jewelry. Well, I tweaked my clothing. I cut it. I dyed it. I added trim. I updated it. I made it look better, whatever I did, so I was always playing with my clothing, and then this led to my career as the clothing designer. And as a clothing designer, I, I learned all about fabric, fit, and construction. And I also learned uh, something really important, how to dress women and help women feel good of various sizes, styles, and budgets. So it wasn't about my personal taste, but about helping them look their best. So a little later on, I am going to share with you five tips to creating your best style. And if you stay till the end, I'm also going to give you a free gift. So stay on. Okay, now let's talk about dressing for success. Because what does that mean? What is appropriate? And does your wardrobe sp spell success? What does success look like to you? So it used to be that most offices where people mostly worked as opposed to the laptop these days, were very formal and professional. So it was a little bit easier. You were wearing a pinstripe suit, a dark suit, a sheath dress, something very formal and considered work attire. But now, many industries are a much more relaxed attire, which gives you more opportunities to wear a variety of clothing, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming. The good news here is, you get to choose your personal style and what makes you feel your best. Just make sure it is always appropriate for your environment and the people you're meeting with and never ever show up sloppy. So there's different types of work environments these days. So if you work in an office, there's a corporate culture in the office. You can look around, you can see what other people are wearing. It's rarely just one thing unless it is a super professional office. There's usually a range of what's appropriate. So if you find your personal style, as long as you stay within that range, you're okay. So that's actually a little bit easier. Some people who work from home might have a great span of the type of clothing that they wear. They can go from meetings that are, are casual coffee dates to more corporate events. So the first question you have to ask yourself is who are you meeting with? What kind of environment are they coming from? And what you need to do is mirror the level of formalness of that environment. So for instance, doesn't mean, for me, I am a very creative individual. I am not a classic individual. So if I'm going to a corporate event or meeting uh, or have a client who's a lawyer or comes from a formal environment, it doesn't mean that I have to wear a classic pinstripe suit. But mirroring their label, level of formalness does mean perhaps I'm still wearing a blazer, but my blazer might have an interesting cut. It might have interesting zipper details. I could perhaps wear leather pants with that, but I'm going to make sure that my look is very polished and still formal. It just may be a funkier version of what they're wearing. That is what I mean by mirroring their level of formalness. You just need to remember two things. There's always a range of appropriate. Again, it's not one thing unless your office is just super professional. And even there, it, it can be a suit or it can be a dress, right? But stay within that range. And the other important thing is to know your audience. Who are they? Like I said, it could be a coffee date. It could be casual and jeans may be appropriate. Again, don't be sloppy. We're not talking about ripped faded jeans and a sweatshirt. We're talking about polished put together jeans with um, you know, accessories, nice shoes, etc. So know who your audience is and always look polished. So whether you like it or not, you're always being judged. And I wanna tell you a story about a temple director. 
This is a woman who came from the suburbs as a temple director, and she interviewed for a very elite temple in New York City. And they're much more formal, upscale, corporate, whatever the words are. And I'm going to venture a guess that if she were competing against somebody and they were neck and neck, the other candidate would have won out. Because according to the people that interviewed her, she was not really dressed to the part. She didn't look up to snuff. So this is where they contacted me. Fortunately, they liked her. They liked her skills and abilities. They just decided when hiring her that she had to pick up her level of appropriateness for this particular position. So it is really important on how you look and how you present yourself. Now I'm gonna talk about dressing for your authentic self. If you look at these two pictures of me, if anybody knows me, I am, it's very easy for them to pick out that I am 100% the curly haired girl on the right. This is who I am. And although I love trends, this is something that I have held fast to through all the Japanese hair straightening, blowouts, etc. Having curly hair has always been my identity and who I am. So last winter, it was about eight degrees out. I know that most of, the, most of us in the Northeast can really relate to that, having last week's weather. I left the hair salon. Usually I leave with dripping wet head. And I said, well, I guess I should have my hair dried. And they offered me a blowout and I said, okay. So I left the hair salon and the owner of the salon who does celebrities complimented me. I got home. My husband complimented me. Of course, he's coming home to a new wife. And many people throughout the week who knew me complimented me, made comments or something. You had to, knowing me. So throughout the whole week that I had this blowout, I looked in the mirror and I just said, I don't get it. I don't feel beautiful. And guess what? If I don't feel beautiful, it doesn't matter how many compliments I get because I'm not carrying myself in that empowered way with my shoulders head back, held back and, and that air of confidence. So you got to feel empowered. It's got to be your authentic self. And for me, blowouts are not. They look fabulous on plenty of other women, but they're just not me. The second story of authentic self is similar, but a little bit different. So as mentioned, I was a clothing designer. And the fun part was that I used to get to bring home all types of samples. So I would keep some for myself. I would give them to my mom, to friends, whoever I thought they were appropriate. So I was going through my, my mother's closet with her and she had this red blazer with some sequins in the fabric and it no longer fit her. So I tried it on and it looked great on me and I decided to take it home. I wore it out to an event. I styled it with items that were my personal style and I left for the event. I knew I looked good. I went to the event and I got a ton of compliments on the jacket, but guess what? When I left that event, I knew that that jacket was going away. And why? Because here's a story where not only did I get the compliments, I also knew I looked good in it, but I also knew that the jacket was not my personal style. It was a little bit more classic than I am. And it just, it just didn't feel like me. So again, even if other people compliment you, you know, it's really got to be your authentic self to really, really feel empowered in it. Now, I know fashion can be intimidating and it changes so quickly. And sometimes it feels like it's hard to, to stay on top of and, and keep up with. I also know that people think you have to spend a lot of money to look good. And this simply is not true. You can go from what I like to call my little tag thing is fine to fab with just a few simple tips. And here is where I'm going to share with you those tips. My first tip number one is tailoring. So we all have different body types. We're all bigger in certain areas and smaller in different areas. So most clothing is not custom made for you and it comes off the rack as it does. So if you've found a designer 
that you love that fits you well that's that's very fortunate but as there's a variety of brands out there and we all don't have a go-to designer you often will need to have items tailored so i want to point out in this picture in the first picture she looks very straight up and down but this woman actually has a beautiful hourglass figure now i know she's standing a little bit sideways and she's got her hands on her hips but we nipped in this dress at the waist a little bit to show off her her hourglass figure and that made it so much more flattering the other thing we did is look at the length, look at the hem in the first picture as opposed to the second, just by taking it up a little bit. Her legs are so much more sexy. Her whole look is so much better. So a nip and a tuck here, an inch or so here or there, can really take an outfit from looking fine to fabulous. It can make it um, look better, flatter your figure more. It can make it look more expensive. This is especially true. Petites really need to um, have a good tailor and, and, and be able to take things to the tailor on a regular basis because they are much harder to fit. The important thing to remember when buying clothing, I know that we sometimes tend to be vain about sizing, is that you always need to buy for the largest part of your body. The rest can be tailored and then it can look like it is made to fit you. But if you have something pulling and dragging and creasing, there is no way to fix that. And you could have a fabulous item and it's just not going to look great because it is too small in a certain area. So please don't be vain and buy the size that fits the largest part of your body. Another tip is that sometimes we don't have all the right things with us in the store. So although it might be, you know, take a little extra effort to return things, I do recommend if you are not sure about an item, this is especially true for, you know, a more formal dress or something. Sometimes you need to bring the item home and really assess it with the right shoes, the right bra, whatever it needs that you don't have with you and then make the decision there. So definitely, even if the clothing is not super expensive, please invest in tailoring to make it look fabulous. The next tip, number two, is what looks good on you. Do you have items of clothing that you know feel good and you, and you always get compliments on? So remember, you have to feel good in them. So what is it about those items of clothing? Is it the color or the shape? Think about you know, at least one of your favorite items. So for me here in this picture, I love how I look in this bright yellow color. So I know that this yellow color makes me look great. Now, I don't want to create a wardrobe full of bright yellow blouses. That would be really redundant. But perhaps there's a sweater or a dress or something else in this bright yellow color I can go to that because I know the color looks good on me. I'll take it a step further. I actually know that bright colors in general look good on me. So there it opens up my whole sphere. Now I can be wearing, I love to wear orange, fuchsia, all these bright colors, and my wardrobe is no longer going to look redundant. Okay, let's talk about shape. So this Skirt, it's a little bit hard to see because the waist is covered in the way I'm standing. But this is called a fit and flare skirt. And this skirt is so flattering to almost all of the body types. So if you have an hourglass figure, it's going to show off your hourglass. Oh, excuse me, the fit and flare is, it says it's very fitted and narrow at your waist and flares out at the hem. So that's going to totally highlight an hourglass figure. Now, if you have broad shoulders and you're very small on the bottom, it's going to create an hourglass figure. If you are straight up and down and don't have a defined waist, it will also create a defined waist. If you are pear-shaped and you carry most of your weight on the bottom in your, in your hips and thighs and butt, it can camouflage that. So the one body type this really is not flattering to is the apple shape, where you are really fully round and um, thick and full in the middle. So, so I, I talk about this body, uh, this 
silhouette for all the other body types. That this could be a go-to shape for you. Again, you don't want it to be redundant. So this is made out of leather, this skirt. So it doesn't mean that you can't have it in all different types of prints. Perhaps it's a textured fabric in a different color. It could be the shape a dress that's fit and flare. So you can create a wardrobe out of colors and shapes without being redundant, but still have them be your go-to, I know I look great in this shape. It also could uh, you know, work with a certain shape pants, that's great for you, but these can be your go-to items. Tip number three, to flatter and camouflage you. So this is gonna be very quick and basic. Uh, but lines and seams and color blocking can break up large areas. So if you have a racing stripe on a pant or a dress that, or color block that goes down the side panels, it's going to trick your eye. Instead of seeing a large expanse of color, it's now broken up. So by color or seams or anything like that. So you want to break up large areas you don't want it to look too large. And in general, you wanna wear color and print on areas you want to highlight and draw attention to, areas that you like, and wear darker colors on areas that you don't. Tip number four, don't buy trends that don't work for you. Every season, there are a million trends that are thrown out there. And I always say, that trends are suggestions and not mandates. So you wanna update your wardrobe with a few trends that resonate with your style, that flatter your figure, that work with other pieces in your wardrobe. One thing I see all the time, which drives me crazy, is they talk about must-haves, the must-have item for fall, the must-have items for, I don't know, that every woman should have. And that's crazy. I look at this list of items and I can tell you, I do not own probably the majority of them because they're not items that resonate with me. Many of them are too classic for me or whatever. They're not flattering, whatever it is. So please only buy trends that you really like. And the other suggestion regarding trends is they are trends. They will go in and out of style. So I recommend not investing too much in trends financially. You can buy fun items to play with and then they can be disposable. Tip number five. So this is, I told you I had five tips for you. Tip number five actually has three parts. But tip number five is accessorizing, which is so, so, so important. So tip 5A is called the three-piece rule. What it is, is if you have a basic top and a basic bottom, or if in the case if you have a basic dress, the dress would then become a two-piece rule. What you wanna do is add a, th a third piece to stylize it, to make it feel put together. So that third piece could be an item of clothing, so it could be a jacket, a vest, a cardigan, or it could be an accessory. It could be a hat, a scarf, a piece of jewelry. I mean, look at this woman in the picture. You take off her hat, her glasses, her scarf, and she's wearing just a basic beige coat. But putting on all the accessories really brings it together, creates a, a style, a, you know, a more stylized look. Okay, so now let's talk about accessorizing, accessorizing guidelines. So if you're a little bit confused and overwhelmed about how do I choose the right accessories, this is some guidelines. Now, please keep in mind that there are a million different types of accessories out there. So until I saw each individual piece, I can't tell you exactly, but these are great, great guidelines to follow. So instead of sticking your hand into your accessory box or whatever it is, closet blindly and just pulling out whatever, here's what you want to do. You want to follow how a magazine does it. They have a mood board or a theme. These two that I'm showing happen to be from Bazaar Magazine. 
And you notice that they both have the color red in them. I did that purposely. Many moods do are the color is important. However, it's not the only thing. So in the first mood board, it has red. And if you look, everything is very geometric, linear, clean, modern. In the second mood board, it has this ethnic feel, this bohemian feel. Even though they both have red in it, they're very different feelings. I'm going to also ask you to picture a third mood board. This one is Asian, specifically Chinese. Again, you probably are thinking red in this mood board, right? But you're also thinking um, maybe it's red and black and white, but it probably has like that gold scrolly ornate sort of feeling. So in your first mood board with the linear, personally, if I'm gonna choose accessories for this, they're going to be silver. They're going to be clean, bold, and modern because it goes with the whole mood. This second board, if I'm going to choose accessories for, may not choose a metal. I might choose some colored beads or, or something, um, some kind of scarf with fringes. Uh, it's, a, it's a, just a very different feeling. And for my uh, Chinese board, I am going to choose something gold and scrolly uh, and having that sort of Asian feel. So my point is, you cannot, even though all these boards have red in it, you do not want to take that gold scrolly ornate, maybe it's red and gold, and wear it with the first board, because even though they both share red, they have a very different feel. So I'm not telling you to go out and buy the exact accessories. I'm just saying when you choose your accessories, this is a very good thing to choose by. And a mood can be determined by a print. So perhaps it's an Aztec print. So you want to mirror the shapes in the prints. An Aztec print has a lot of diamonds and V-shapes. So perhaps your jewelry might have these diamonds and V-shapes. Perhaps the mood is a very specific piece of clothing. So say it's a safari jacket. So here, I don't think you're going to choose red to go back to the safari jacket. So here, color is important. You are going to choose maybe earthy type of feeling colors. And your accessories are going to be very organic. Maybe they're wood. They're very earthy feeling. So go by that, that mood and, and mirror the shapes. Now, you may have, um, as we talked about from the three-piece rule, very plain and simple. Not everything has a mood. And therefore, go ahead, be my guest, put whatever accessories. But prints help to define a mood, and so does um, a specific theme, such as a safari jacket or an Asian kimono blouse or something like that. Okay. 5C, okay, so don't over accessorize. So a general guideline, and like I said, many things, there's so many different accessories out there that until I see them, I can't say 100%. But a general guideline is that like items can be stacked. So you've seen an armful of stacked bracelets, you've seen rings that stack, you've seen necklaces that stack. So those are okay. But be careful about drawing too much attention to one area. So for instance, if you have a big bold necklace and big bold earrings and perhaps you wear glasses, that's just too much attention in one area. If you have a big bold belt like this woman is wearing in the picture and you have this long pendant necklace that's gonna hit close to your waist, that's too much attention in one area. So a statement piece is called a statement piece because it is make it the statement. Don't over accessorize and over embellish. Uh, have that be the focal point. And um, then stacked items are, are usually more delicate items. So those are my five tips for you ladies. But wait, I have a bonus. And not everything is going to work for everybody, I always say, but to instantly feel empowered, hopefully you can choose one of these things. 
So put on a bold colored lipstick, or for you, maybe you're not quite that bold, but maybe it's a lipstick as opposed to a, a nude colored lipstick. Put on heels, you'll carry yourself in an empowered way, or put on perfume. So two seconds and you can instantly, instantly feel empowered. So ladies, uh, before we get into Q&A, I want to thank you so much for listening to me here. And as a special thank you for everyone for joining me today, I'd love to offer you a gift. What you will need to do is email me, cyan at styleempower.com, that's D-I-A-N-E at S-T-Y-L-E-M as in Mary, P-O-W-E-R, and it's written right down there at the bottom of your screen, Diane at styleempower.com, and write in the subject, free gift. And I will send you nine dressing tips to flatter your figure. So that concludes my speech, and I would be thrilled to help you with any questions you might have. Thanks, Diane. I want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box here, or you can email info at SavvyLadies.org. The first question we had come in is, my work wardrobe is very different from my weekend wardrobe. I wish I could find pieces that could be both casual and work appropriate, depending on if they're dressed up or dressed down. But does anything like that exist? It sure does, and I would say a key there really is how you accessorize it too. So perhaps on the weekend you could wear, you know, I mean there's a million kinds of black pants, let's say, which is just a good basic. So maybe on the weekend you wear it with flats, and then to work you wear it with heels. Again, I don't know if you wear heels and all these different things, but these are just types of suggestions on how you can wear things. Perhaps to work you put on a big, bold, great piece of accessory that maybe is gold and dressier. And on the weekends, uh, you know, maybe it's uh, some kind of casual scarf with tassels. Again, I don't know if you wear any of these things, but it's about accessorizing basic pieces and really taking them, um, maybe a blazer you could wear with jeans on the weekends and then wear it to work. So wearing back to, what are you wearing it back to and how are you accessorizing it? And of course, if I saw the specifics in your wardrobe, I could help you a little bit more, but that's a good, good, good start. Okay, great, thanks. Another question here is, do you have any tips for disguising post baby belly when buying professional clothing? Yes, so anything that sort of doesn't cling to your body, but sort of drapes over it. So some of it sort of has, I hope you know what I mean by drapes, um, sort of hangs loosely and it's probably has, um, oh, it's a little bit hard to describe um, without a picture, um, but you don't, you don't want a, a very clingy item, but something that lays softly over it and sort of cascades down you is great to cover a baby bomb. You can also think of a wrap, a classic wrap dress. Not only will that accommodate the before and the after sizes, um, but you can sort of um, hopefully, you know, a lot of those things that wrap like that will sort of scrunch and not lay 100% flat and not cling as much. So, uh, yeah, anything that drapes over uh, looser, full, I would wear looser, fuller tops with skinnier bottoms, so the tops are not tight and clingy. So uh, again, that's uh, some good suggestions without having some great visuals or, or ex actual examples in front of you. Okay, thanks. Another question that came in is about trends and wanting to know, how do you know when the trend that you've just gotten into is over and you should stop accessorizing with that trend? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I would guess if you found the trend originally, of course, it depends if you found the trend in the beginning or later on, I would say, however you found it, what is your go to resource? Did you read about it? Did a friend tell you about it? Did you see it in the store? 
I guess I would use that resource because many people find out about trends in many different ways. Um, to, to go to that same resource where you found it to sort of see, is there a next thing? I will warn you, I have often seen in many of the big major fashion magazines that they try to promote a new trend and they'll say, trend number X is in and trend number Y is out. And guess what? On the next page, there's an advertisement from a big designer with trend number Y that they just said is out. Like for instance, I've been hearing for a long, long time, oh, skinny jeans are out. So they're trying to, promote and there are all different types of wide leg pants loose flowy pants and jeans and all of that stuff so they keep trying to promote it but the truth of the matter is that skinny jeans are still in if you go into every store every store still has them you still see them on the celebrities so you know maybe it's the celebrities that you follow for these trends um so it's a little bit of a tricky question uh, and again, I, I guess I would just go back to your go-to resource wherever you found it and, and, and see if that helps. Okay, thank you. And do you have time for one last question? I sure do. <laughs> okay, the question is, I'm petite, but I want to try the midi length skirt. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to not get overpowered by this long skirt? And can you just talk again about the uh, skirts that are best for each body shape? Okay, well, I, I, body shape is an entire conversation of its own. And the reason that I pointed it out in the skirt was because this was such a good shape for the majority of body types. So I thought it was worthwhile to talk about, but that's an entire conversation. So let me get back to the original question. With the midi, hopefully you can wear heels. Heels are going to help um, if you're petite with proportions. If you have a hard time wearing a big heel, at least go for a small, a kitten heel, a block heel. Uh, platform heels are very helpful because they actually don't give as much angle, but hopefully um, you can wear a heel with the midi skirt. And the other thing, which is always a good rule for proportion, if you're going big and full on the bottom, you want to go thin on top. So you're gonna wear it back to uh, a clingy knit sweater, you know, a tight turtleneck or something. You don't wanna wear a big voluminous top and then a big voluminous bottom. So keep proportions in mind always for everyone, but especially when you're petite and definitely try to wear heels also to help balance that out. Okay. Well, I think we're about out of time. So I want to thank you again, Diane, for a really fun and helpful presentation. And I want to thank everyone who joined us today. We hope that you'll join us again for future webinars. And thank you again so much, Diane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.